everyone. In today's video, I want to show you the amazing shape shifting system that comes with RPG Builder. As you can see, it makes it very easy to switch from your character to another shape, as well as from one shape to another. So seamlessly, I can transition from a dragon to a wolf, back to a dragon, back to a wolf, and back to a human after that. Now I say dragon and wolf, but as always in RPG Builder, these things can be anything you want. If you wanted to transform in a rock or even a tree, it would be actually possible. Uh, in this case, I'm using the Malbirth animation models and animations. So both is wolf and is um, elemental dragon. And um, yeah, so that's pretty much it for the kind of visual aspect of shape shifting. Uh, you can see that you can use any model you want. Um, but the reason I'm using Malbirth one is, uh, first of all, they look amazing, but also it provides animations that are meant to be used as a um, uh, controlled animal, right? What I mean by this is um, a lot of the animation for the wolf, the jumping, etc. You can see these are not animations that always come with Creature Pack uh, because most NPCs, etc. will not jump, etc. But anyway, this is really perf perfect in terms of packs. Um, for shape shifting, but again, you can use whatever you want. Now, the second cool thing about uh, shape shifting is that it's very, very easy to make a uh, ground uh, shape shifting. So, for example, the wolf, as you can see right now, you know, I'm just working and jumping. But as you can see, if I switch to the dragon now and start looking up, it will automatically start flying. All of this, of course, is defined in the editor. If you wanted a dragon that is not able to fly and can only work on the ground, that's obviously completely possible but i'm going to show you how to make it fly uh, later but this is very neat it can let us um you know just fly around uh, aim at the ground again start working fly again and so on so it feels really cool uh, i literally find myself just flying around and sprinting around with the wolf when i'm supposed to test things just because it's just so fun to do so uh, i really think there is a huge potential to um make literally entire games out of this mechanic alone um i think Players will love that a lot. So anyway, another uh, cool thing about shape shifting is uh, that, as you can see right now, if I'm in my human form, I have my normal action bar. In this case, there are no abilities in it. It's just uh, some potions, etc. But um, if I now switch to the dragon, you can see that I have this uh, fireball ability here that has been added. And this is another part of the shape shifting feature. It allows you to... Um, uh, decide if you want to, it's optional, uh, to have different abilities uh, when you are under this shape ship. To in, in this case, as you can see, I can start uh, shooting fireball with my dragon. Um, so yeah, I could just start uh, burning everything on my path. You could have the same thing for the wolf, but in this video, I didn't add any um, unique ability. But yeah, you get the idea. You can have as many unique abilities as you want, and they will switch in and out as you... Um, go from one shape shift to another. Now, uh, there are quite a few other things you can do when you enter a specific shape shift, and I'm going to cover this uh, in the editor uh, in a bit. But first, before that, I also want to show you um, how am I actually currently going from one shape shift to another, because you might be wondering, right? Uh, first of all, like I said, there are no abilities on my bar right now. So you might be wondering, okay, so where are the shape shift? And you can see that I'm not clicking on anything, right? So um, what I make, what I made for um, the system is something very, very similar, if not the exact same thing as World of Warcraft, um, which is what you can see here at the bottom. You can of course customize this UI, choose where it is, how big it is, etc. But basically, uh, RPG Builder will detect every single shape shifting abilities that your character currently know so for example inside a spell book or a talent trees and things like that and it will display them inside this shape shifting uh, specific ui so here as you can see i have my dragon form my wall form and if i click them it's doing the exact same thing that when i was pressing those keys and you can see that it's even showing you the currently active one with uh, this green border so pretty cool now, when it comes to the keys, if I go under settings here, you see that um, I have shapeshift one, shapeshift two, shapeshift three keys. These are the three keys I predefined for you in the demo, but you can of course add more than that if uh, you wanted to. And I'm going to show you that right now. So if you go in the editor under settings, uh, general and action keys here. So first you open action keys and then action keys list. And if we scroll down a bit, let me maximize. 
it's a lot of keys already so anyway here we have the shape shift one and so on and all you would have to do if you wanted to add a new one is just create a new key here and i just keep the prefix so here i could go ahead and copy that and now i could be uh, doing shape shift four and so on and then all the uh, the rest of the information is up to you and if you go ahead and save that you are now going to be able to uh, not only switch it in game directly it's going to be automatically added to the menu for you but you will be able to use it um if you have at least you know four shape shift right because in this case it's only going to use one and two so yeah that's pretty much it for the presentation of the uh, mechanic and now i'm going to go in the editor and show you how it is all set up so it all starts with an effect so combat effects and here i'm going to be looking at the current shape shifting effect um there are actually a wolf shapeshift and a wyvern shapeshifting effect in the demo for you to look at but i'm going to show you with the ones i made for uh, this video which are using um better looking models than what i have access to in the demo so here we can look at the wolf one first um so very simple it's an effect of type shapeshifting as you could have imagined uh, in this case, you can decide to make it a specific duration or in endless. In this case, I want it to be endless. I want this to become my form until I decide to switch, right? Then very simple, you assign your model and this prefab um, I'm going to show you. If you select it, you see that it has nothing on it, right? No component, no script, no animator, nothing. You just need the model with the mesh and material in it. So in this case, I can show you, right? This is literally just uh, the wolf model here. Then after that, you have the model position. So this is the local position it's going to have in your player, um, as well as the scale. So for example, if I will go ahead now and set this to uh, 0 0.4 and um, shape shift, you can see that, well, my wolf is quite tiny now. So it's not really what I wanted. So I'm going to pull it back to uh, what it was before, but you can see that you have full control over that. And you could even, um, you know, you can really easily adjust this with uh, this uh, value here. So if I go ahead now and shape shift in the dragon, as you can see, we are way bigger. So pretty cool. Once again, I'm going to pull it back to uh, one because it's a bit too big here. Much better. So let's go back to the wolf. And then we have the animator controller and avatar. So uh, the avatar is whatever avatar comes with your model. So this is pretty straightforward, just drag and drop. Now, when it comes to the animator um, in the demo, if you go under the character here and then animator and then shape shifting, you will have the um, RPG for person animator wolf and RPG for person animator wyvern uh, controller available to you. So what I suggest you to do is either use the animator directly, but first I will suggest you to duplicate it. So you just do control D. So that way you can very easily modify it without breaking anything. And then you will just go ahead and drag and drop here. Or if you want to go to do something even easier, you could just go ahead here, create animation override and call it, for example, wolf or whatever. And here we can drag and drop the new one we uh, duplicated. And here you will have all the list of animations that you can override. In this case, in this video, you can see that um, I cleaned it quite a bit for the dragon, for example. But you don't have to worry about this. Um, uh, as you will test, you will see that the main animations anyway are the ones at the bottom. So attack, falling, idle, jump, and so on. So yeah, that's pretty much it. Just uh, either create the animator directly. In this case, uh, we can look at, let me double click this. Here you see that it's um, quite a simple animator. It's very similar to the player one because it's using the same character controller anyway. But um, so you can just go ahead and replace the animation here or even easier, like I just showed you, create an animator override, which you can then drag and drop here, just like any other animator and just simply replace those clips with yours. Now, uh, here you have a few options. So uh, root motion, extra. So this is once again up to you. Uh, can camera aim? This means um, if I am in shape shifting, can I go in a mode? Yes or no? So for the wolf, I disabled it. So right now, if I press the key, it's not working. But for the dragon, for example, um, I can easily switch from 
uh, M to non A mode. So that's pretty much what this setting is. Now that's where things uh, become a bit more interesting. So let me switch to the um, dragon shape shifting one. And here you see that we have a button to add abilities. And uh, first of all, this button is only going to be visible if you turn on override main action bar. So if you turn this on, this means, okay, whenever we enter this uh, dragon uh, form uh, or shape shifting, it is going to activate a specific or like temporary action bar that will be defined by whatever abilities you have in it. So if I now um, add a frost bolt here and save, and uh, go back in game, you can see that now uh, when I go to the dragon, I now also have the frostbolt ability on my bar. So as always, you can see how everything is very easy with RPG Builder. So here it's really uh, letting you define custom abilities, but if you don't want that, you just turn this off and it will, you know, you will still become the wall for whatever shape shift you made, but you will keep your um, normal action bar active. Now, another one that's cool here, uh, similar to the stealth um, effect uh, which we saw in the previous video here you see that you can also enable some custom effects and these effects are going to be active as long as this shape shift effect is active and in this case guess what we have a flying effect so the wolf doesn't have any effect right um, we could have I don't know whatever you want a dot something that deals damage to us uh, actually a cool use case could even be for example let's say that you have some kind of demon form and uh, what you could do is add a dot to yourself which is going to for example remove one corruption per second or whatever and when the corruption reaches zero you can stop the uh, shape shifting so that's pretty cool um anyway when it comes to the dragon here you see that we have the uh, flying effect uh, which is the reason we have uh, we can now fly if um, i don't have this anymore then uh, i can go ahead here let me go back in game and you can see that uh, if I look up now, we are no longer going to fly, right? Uh, it's only going to happen when we have an active uh, flying effect. So uh, let me add this back and I'm going to show you the flying effect, um, how it's done in the editor. So let me go ahead and save and now look for flying here. So this is very, very simple. Uh, look at that. It's just a new effect uh, of type flying buff and less because i want it to last as long as uh, the shape shift is active and that's it there is literally nothing else uh, you could add some particle effect if you wanted some animation but there is nothing else needed like literally we don't need um, any other settings it's just pretty much here to say hey i'm active and this means this character is now flying that's pretty much all it is And uh, lastly, you can uh, alter the stats. So once again, if we look at the wolf, for example, here above the wolf and the dragon, as you can see, they add 10 movement speed. If I remove that and go back to uh, the game, now you can see that I'm working normally. And uh, also notice that the movement speed of wolf and the dragon and everything is also affecting the animation speed. Let me add it again so you can see how it's done movement speed and in this case i'm just going to put it back to 10. so that's pretty much it that's all um you had to learn and understand for the shape shifting system and here you see that lastly uh, we don't play an animation but we play a visual effect which is um this particle here that you can see that makes it look uh, kind of cool and um, it you know makes a nice transition you can also use this to hide some um maybe like non great looking things that happens during 1.2 second or whatever when you transition to a model in this case i don't really have this as you can see it, i mean it's looking quite nice right there is no like a glitch or whatever but you can use particles it's a good way um in video games in general um with smoke or whatever to hide uh, some things that only happens quickly so yeah that's pretty much all i wanted to show you for the shape shifting mechanic i hope you like it um i personally love it i'm having so much fun uh, like i said it feels really great and um, i'm sure you will think the same way when you actually experience it in game so yeah thank you for watching and see you in a future video